During the summer months, the Duke and Duchess of Boxford like to visit the Fat Controller's Railway. They stay in a summer house on a large private estate, complete with a loop of track and a shed for Spencer. It's a beautiful and picturesque location in the summer months, secluded in the woods, with animals frolicking freely in the sunshine. For the rest of the year, however, the loop sits untouched and unused. The engines have no reason to venture down it, for with no one staying there, the line serves no purpose. And so the large mansion and the track sit quietly, waiting for the summer months when they'll see use again. One year, however, the line was to be travelled upon in the off months. It was a cool autumn evening and Neville the bullied Q1 had just retired to his shed for the evening when he saw the Fat Controller's car enter the yard. He parked it and walked over to Neville's shed. Good evening, sir. What brings you here at this time of night? I have an important job for you, Neville. The Duke and Duchess of Boxford spoke to me, telling me that the track at Boxford Loop felt a bit rough this summer. As far as I can tell, the line hasn't seen much maintenance since... Well before I took over as controller. <laughs> Needless to say, that needs to be attended to, and I've decided to put you in charge of the track maintenance. Neville was surprised. Me, sir? Are you sure? That seems like a big responsibility. Indeed it is, and I have good faith that you'll do a fine job with it. You start next week, so take some time to prepare yourself. We must make sure that the Boxford Loop is in tip-top shape. Yes, sir, Neville replied excitedly. The Fat Controller gave a nod, then got into his car and drove away. The weeks passed, and before Neville knew it, he found himself on his first day of his new job. He collected his train of workmen and supplies early that morning and set off for Boxford Loop. The sunny sky had become dreary and cloudy by the time Neville reached the loop's junction. A low mist had begun to settle, and it gave the line a very ominous look. The driver threw the points, and Neville slowly set off down the line. The tracks felt old and rough, though Neville hardly paid attention to that. The mist made the secluded area seem even more liminal, and truth be told, it was putting him on edge. Wheel turn by wheel turn, he made his way down the branch. Presently, Neville saw the outline of a large structure cutting through the mist. It was the summer house, which didn't look nearly as inviting as Neville had pictured. It stood tall and still high up on a hill uninhabited by anyone. He wondered to himself whether the Duke and Duchess would ever step foot in it again if they were to see it like this. Neville had soon puffed past the mansion, and it disappeared back into the fog just as quickly as it had appeared. He trudged on down the line and around the rest of the loop, struggling to keep his nerves in check. Neville completed his circle around the loop. The men had taken a note of any spot where the track needed tending to, and Neville spent the rest of the day pushing his trucks to and fro, stopping to let the men work where they were marked. All went to plan, and as night broke, the men were packing up the last of their tools and preparing to head home. Just as they were about to leave, there suddenly came an ear-piercing scream followed by the sound of panicked footsteps charging through the forest all around them. The only light source came from Neville's headlamp, which was barely bright enough to illuminate even the outermost edge of the woods. The footsteps continued. Neville and the men were horrified. Get us out of here, called a workman. Snapping out of it, Neville's driver threw open the regulator and the train shot backwards. 
as they gunned it out of there, Neville could have sworn he saw a shadowy figure standing on the tracks, watching him puff away. The next morning, Neville awoke to find the fat controller standing outside his shed, with a stern expression on his face. Due to unforeseen circumstances, he began, there will be no maintenance trains to take down Boxford Loop today. Neville was surprised, but not all that disappointed. Um, might I ask why, sir? Does it have anything to do with the footsteps we heard last night? No, the fat controller replied sharply. A couple of hooligans trespassing on private property is hardly grounds to delay such an important operation. Rest assured, the police have been informed of last night's events and are looking into it. The actual reason is that nearly three quarters of the workmen from yesterday are refusing to go back today. I was unable to come up with a replacement team on such short notice, however, I should have one assembled by tomorrow. Never wasn't all that surprised he'd considered protesting himself. I will she chewish, the fat controller continued, that those men are punished. I do not tolerate insubordination on my railway. You're to help with the good traffic on the main line for today. If all goes according to plan, you'll leave with another maintenance train first thing tomorrow. Is that understood? Yes, sir, Neville replied feebly, though secretly. He hoped things wouldn't go according to plan. Neville spent his day pulling goods trains back and forth around the island. Word of the previous night's events had already begun to spread around the railway. Heard he got run out of the woods by some drunk kids last night, Neville, James teased. Oh, the horrors. If you hadn't run out of there in time, maybe they'd have subjected you to the horrors of partying with them. <laughs> That's not funny. I don't know what was out there last night, but it wasn't just a couple of juveniles having a good time. I can tell you that much. Well, whatever it was, I'd take care in future. Who knows? Maybe next time they'll start dancing too. Ha ha ha. Everyone Neville saw wanted to know all about his encounter, though none more so than Edward. He was hoping to see Neville as soon as he could, however things wouldn't work out for this to happen. At the end of the day, Neville backed down into his shed, not much looking forward to what tomorrow had in store. Surprisingly, the next few days went by rather uneventfully. Neville and the men made good progress and nothing strange happened. Neville was beginning to wonder if the events of the first night did have a rational explanation after all. One evening, Neville had stopped as usual to let the men work, when the guard walked up to him. I've just received a call from a plane, he told him. There was a mix-up at the yard this morning. A van needed for Henry's fish train was shunted onto your train by mistake. You need to return it to the yard so it can be loaded in time for the kipper tonight. Leave the men and the tools here. It'll take them a few hours to patch up this bit of track. So, they should be getting ready to leave when you return. Uh, will do, Neville replied. And he set off up the line to bring Henry his van. He arrived at the harbour by dusk and shunted the van over to where Henry was waiting. Sorry about the confusion, I came as soon as I heard, Neville said. Henry was about to reply, before suddenly fixing his gaze upon the van. Neville, what happened to the van? Neville looked over and gasped. There, on the side of the van, was a large pole. It looked fresh. I... I, I don't know. It wasn't like that when I left, or at least... Well, at least I don't think it was. It looks like someone broke it open with something heavy, like like a hammer? An axe, maybe? Well, maybe one of the men had an accident with some tools? No, but surely I would have noticed that. I. Oh, I don't know. I'll ask about it when I get back. Again, I'm really sorry about the van, Henry. Neville finished, and he steamed away to collect the men, his curiosity now intrigued. It was dark when Neville returned to collect the men. The moon was full and shined the faintest of light onto the summer house. The men had put their tools away and were waiting in the coach. Neville buffered up to the train and was just about to puff away when suddenly... 
Another ear-piercing scream, exactly like the one from the first night, suddenly rang out through the darkness. Neville's eyes darted around, looking for the source. In the faint light from the moon, he could just make out the shape of several figures charging through the forest, seemingly running away from the mansion. Neville was petrified and couldn't find his voice to call out to them. And then he noticed another figure walking through the darkness. It was making its way towards him and appeared to be holding something. The figure walked onto the track and stopped. It was a man dressed in old fashioned clothes, wielding a large axe. He stared blankly at Neville for what felt like an eternity. Then he turned on his heel and ran off into the darkness. Neville suddenly became aware of his crew Neville? calling out to him. Neville, you're right, mate. You hearing us? Uh, yeah, I'm all right. We're good. Let's get out of here. And so they did. Neville pumped his pistons and raced backwards out of the forest as fast as he could. Work on the line's restoration was put on hold, and Neville resumed his work as a goods engine. The engines laughed at first, but they soon stopped when they realised whatever he'd experienced had taken a toll on Neville, who barely said a word. A few weeks passed, and one morning Neville awoke to find Edward and the Fat Controller waiting outside his shed. Morning, Neville. I hear things have been rough for you since you began working at Boxford Loop. Sure, I've brought Edward here, who says you can clear up some things for you. Check it away, Edward, the Fat Controller said, before he and Neville both turned their attention to Edward. Boxford Loop wasn't always owned by the Boxfords. In the early days of the railway, it was a mansion owned by a wealthy businessman and his wife. They had themselves a car, of course, for getting where they needed to go, however they found it difficult to host large gatherings and parties, with the mansion being so secluded. So, they commissioned a privately owned railway line to run to their mansion and around the estate. They would then charter out trains for guests or supplies to be brought to them. That would be pulled by one of the Northwestern engines. One night, I was given a charter train of guests to be taken to the mansion for a party. I didn't get to travel there much, so I was happy to get the chance. I always liked the little scenic line. I dropped the passengers off and returned home to my shed for the night. I awoke the next morning to find the police waiting to get a statement from me. It turned out that the previous night a deranged man had snuck into the house with an axe, where he began attacking the party guests. In the commotion, many of the guests ran for their lives into the surrounding woods, where they were then hunted down and killed by the axeman, before he would take his own life later that night. The tragedy left the owners of the house dead, and so the mansion sat unoccupied for many years until the Duke and Duchess of Boxford found it, whilst looking for a summer house decades later. Now, by then, the history of the estate was all but forgotten about the public, so I imagine it's likely the Boxfords have no idea of the horrors that occurred on the property all those years ago. Wait, so Edward, so, so you're saying I... you're saying I saw... ghosts? I, I, I cannot be certain, Neville. But the incident did occur around this time of year, and those poor souls' lives were taken from them before they knew what was happening. I believe that you bore witness to the lost spirits of the guests, being forced to relive the horrific night that cost them their lives. But that's just what I believe, Neville. You can draw your own conclusions, but I think... Neville said nothing, for he was lost in thought. The Fat Controller ultimately decided not to go through with repairing the track. He told the Boxfords the history of their estate and told them if they wished to get the line restored, they'd have to come up with the means to do so themselves. Now aware of its history, 
The Duke and Duchess decided they wanted nothing to do with the Summer House and sold it off. With the story now widely known by the public again, no one wanted it. And so it was left to sit alone and abandoned. Neville eventually made peace with his trauma, though from time to time he dreams of his experiences at Boxwood Loop. He can only hope that the line will remain untouched for the rest of time. a beautiful and picturesque location in the summer months secluded in the woods with animals frocking fr <laughs> with animals fucking freely in the sunshine no, no.